Okay, folks, for this screencast, what we're going to do is we're going to build on um, the RREF function, um, except this is uh, a routine using uh, essentially writing your own Gaussian elimination function. So I already have a routine uh, built. Um, I'll post a link in the description of the old video that I made. But basically, um, you have this uh, 3 by 3 matrix here, and you need to perform row reduction. So I did the row reduction manually by uh, creating the pivot columns and then zeroing out the other two uh, rows and then I did that and rolled it into a, a double for loop here and so uh, the example matrix I did was this one right here so if I run it um, here's the matrix here on the left and then here's the identity matrix on the right and so basically row reduction goes like this you take the first row there's a three in the pivot column so you divide the whole thing by three, so you get a one here. And then what you do is you multiply this by two, and then you subtract it from the second row. And so that zeroes out this um, element here. And then you do the same thing for the third row. So you get this, so you get one zero zero in the first column. All the while the identity matrix over here is getting messed up as well. Then basically you switch to the second row and you look at this 3.333 and you divide the entire row by 3.333 to get one in this pivot column here. And then you do the same thing. You multiply this by one third and then subtract it from the top row, multiply it by 7.3, subtract from the bottom row, and then you've got one zero zero and then zero one zero in the second column. So then you look at the third pivot column here. You take 9.2, divide the entire row by 9.2, you get a one here, and then you hit the top row, the middle row, and what you're left with is the identity matrix on the left, and then you're left with this weird matrix on the right. And it turns out that weird matrix on the right is actually the inverse. And so at the bottom of my script here, I wrote, I use the built-in function inverse, INV, and then I grabbed the uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth column of this matrix here. Um, notice that this, because I'm using IDX 1 to S, this will actually work for any size matrix, uh, just, just in case you were wondering. So um, someone posted in the comments and said, well, what happens if you get a matrix like this, where the uh, inverse exists, uh, it's not undefined, but because Gaussian elimination is naive and you need to do what's called row swapping, um, you get NANDs. And so what happens is, is that this line of code here, line 24, says, um, in the first loop it says take the first row and divide it by the one one element so it essentially says take this first row and divide it by this zero and so obviously that's not going to work because there's a zero here so what we actually have to do is uh, check for row swapping so what we want to do is want to say if the absolute value of aug a idx comma idx is less than one e2 uh, display need to row swap and I'm just gonna throw that in there right now so it's gonna say okay hey you need to row swap okay um, you need to row swap uh, and I'm gonna say display um, row swap row equals and I'm gonna do num to string one so it's gonna say you need to row swap row one okay so then what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well, we need to find a row to swap with. So what we want to do is loop through the entire uh, column and find a pivot column that's not equal to zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to say for JDX equals one to S. S is the number of rows. And I'm going to say if the absolute value of aug A, and what row am I in? Well, I'm in the IDX the row. Well, sorry, I'm in the IDX column, but I'm in the JDX row. So this JDX is going to start at 1, so I'm going to be the first time I'm going to be at the first row, then I'm going to be the second row, and then the third row, but I always want I want to continue to look in the first column. So if the absolute value of aug JDX IDX is greater than 1e negative 2, I'm going to say SW equals JDX, which essentially says hey, if it's not equal to, if it's greater than this small threshold, if it's not equal to zero, then swap with this row. So then it's gonna say, you know, uh, display swapping with row equals 
and I'm going to do display num to string sw. And so now it's going to say, okay, I, you need to swap row one and look at that, it's going to swap with row two. So now we just perform the swap. So we're going to perform the swap. So what you need to do in order to perform a swap is you need to say, um, uh, take do a temp row equals aug a of, and then the row you want is sw comma all. So this saves the sw row. And remember, you want the entire row, so that's why I'd use the uh, all there. And then you're gonna do, you're gonna say, okay, aug a of sw comma all is equal to aug a idx comma all. So what that does is it takes the first row and switches it with the row that we were just about to swap. And then finally, we're gonna say aug a of idx comma all equals that temp row. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the semicolon off here so we can actually see what's happening. So we hit go here. It looks like it completely fixed it. There's the built-in inverse and there's Gaussian elimination. And so what happened was is we get up here and it looks like we actually did two row swaps. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, so um, it says, all right, you need to swap row one because there's a zero there, right? And so it says, all right, swapping with row two. So, oh, I put a one here, whoops. Let me put an IDX there. There we go. Okay, so I need to swap row one. So I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna swap it with row two. So if you look at this row, one, two, three, zero, one, zero, one, two, three, zero, one, zero. So what is it was originally row two, now it's row one. And then what was originally row one is now row two. And then I divide by one, which gives me essentially the same matrix. I hit the bottom row and the next row, so I get one, zero, zero. And then, the routine is now gonna look at this guy and it's gonna say, hey, there's a zero there. And it's gonna say, okay, you need to swap row two with row three, which is good. And actually, um, I need to put in, this This got kind of lucky. Um, you actually can only swap with rows below you. So we can only do JDX is IDX plus one to S. I think it'll, st it'll still work, but you're not allowed, you, if, you, if you swap row one with row two, you're gonna completely screw everything up. So you can only swap with rows below you. So if you don't find anything, so, I mean, um, you could probably put an if statement in here and say if, uh, maybe after the swap, you wanna do clear SW, and then up here say if uh, does not exist, um, SW comma var uh, display matrix probably singular because it, it, it probably just you couldn't find it um, so I don't know I, I don't want to test that right now but um, just know that that's a pretty pretty convenient way to check it so anyway so I'm swapping row two with row three so now I've got this situation and so I divide the whole row by one which is good and then I zero out the top row, zero out the bottom row, and then I move to the third row, divide by one, and then I hit the top row, and then the middle row, and then I'm left with uh, the, uh, the elimination row here. Um, if you have a matrix that you want to try and throw at me, I tried to go online and find like matrices that I could test with, and believe it or not, I couldn't find like a cool matrix where you like had to swap rows. So I don't know if this code is bulletproof, but it, uh, it essentially shows how to add in the row swap um, algorithm. So uh, hopefully that will help, and uh, good luck.